Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel where this month I'm sharing with you some of our favorite recipes and today we're going to make cabbage and kielbasa. So cabbage and kielbasa is absolutely one of our favorites and it's super quick and easy to make which is another thing that we of course love about it. So the, both of the kids have learned how to make it so they even make it sometimes if I'm not here and we have the ingredients to make it. I found this recipe a few years ago when one of my many times of trying to lose weight and looking for good low carb recipes. And this is one that we came across and it has just stayed with us ever since. Now, I always pretty much double the recipe because I do feel like that we eat more of it. It is a great dish to kind of make and keep and reheat throughout the week and everything like that. So. It's good for me to fix if I'm going to work over the weekend. I may fix it on Thursday and then eat on it over the weekend while I'm working or whatever. So what you're going to need is if you're going to make it just a regular size, I would say for two people. But if you have more than two people, I would recommend doubling it personally. Um, and then if you want it to be more filling, we've also have served it with rice or served something else with it too. But you're gonna need a beef kielbasa. So again, I'm doubling it, I have two. You're gonna need a small to medium onion. I went ahead and chopped one up. And then you are gonna need a medium size cabbage, head of cabbage. Now, in the very beginning, I would buy a head of cabbage and I would cut it, shred it or whatever. And it felt like it took absolutely forever. And that was one thing that held me back from making the recipe more than we actually wanted it. So then I learned a trick to just buy the coleslaw mix and you have your cabbage already cut up. So I have two bags of coleslaw. If I go to Sam's, I buy one big bag and I'll just make that one big bag. But if I go to Aldi's or Kroger's or Walmart or anywhere else and they don't have the big bags and I just get two of the little bags and you're also going to need olive oil and butter for this recipe and you're going to need some minced garlic and some paprika and one thing I like when doubling it and doubling the meat and everything you just get more meat in it and then typically I will dice my meat into fours versus just doing rounds or sometimes I'll just do halves. So I will say that one good thing about this, this is considered a one pot meal. We're gonna cook our meat first. We're gonna take our meat off and let's um, let that rest while we cook down the cabbage. But you wanna keep your juices and everything from your meat in there. So yeah, so good one pot meal. So I'm gonna go dice up our meat and head to the stove. I will see you there. All right, so we're at the stove. I have a big pot. If you have a big pan, um, you can use that. I've also used a wok before if I'm just making half of it. Um, and we're gonna take about a tablespoon of oil and go ahead and add that to your pots. And we're just gonna kind of let that heat up for a little bit. Camera glitched, I'm sorry. So I added up about a tablespoon of oil in here. Uh, it is on medium high heat and then I put in our meat. And we're just kind of going to brown that, cook it until it has a nice brownness to it. And then we're going to reduce the heat and remove this from the heat. And I'm just kind of going to toss it and mix it a little bit um, every few minutes just to kind of get it all evenly cooked. All right, so we have this kind of cooked it down. Um, we got like a nice brownness to it. This is good. So I'm going to go ahead and take the meat out and we're just going to put it in a bowl. And I'm kind of going to try to drain some of the juice because you really want to keep some of the juice for cooking your onions and your cabbage. All right, we got all of our meat out of our pan and as you can see, whoops, as you can see we still have a good bit of juice and oil left from the meat. And now we're going to go in and I'm going to add about two tablespoons of butter into the pan. Get it melted some, get a good coating on your pan. And I'm gonna go in and add the onion. And we're gonna go ahead and just kind of start to saute this. All right, we're gonna let our onions cook for about three minutes. Once that's done, I like to go ahead and add in a little bit of garlic right now. 
we'll come back and we'll add some more. But I like to go ahead and just add a little bit right now. Because it's nice for that garlic flavor to kind of get in with the onions, kind of get in with the oil and everything before we add in our cabbage. We have, we're at a good place now. We're going to go ahead and start adding in our cabbage. It's going to seem like a lot, but I promise you it is going to cook down. You just kind of want to try to get everything well incorporated. That way you don't have to worry about your onions and your garlic burning on the bottom. And you don't want to cover this. You just kind of want to let it cook. And now I'm going to go ahead and add the second bag of cabbage to this. This is with the second bag of cabbage in it. As you can tell, the pot is full. And you may think, oh, that's a lot. But I promise you it's going to cook down in just a little bit. So I'm going to try to get this just kind of mixed in, kind of bring up some of what is on the bottom to the top so that we can get everything well incorporated. You're going to want this to cook uncovered for about 10 to 15 minutes. So we'll be back in a little bit to check on it. All right, so as you can see, we've kind of have it cooked down quite a bit. It was kind of up to the top, a little flowing over the top, and now it's about halfway down. So again, another reason why we double this recipe. You want your cabbage to be tender. So we're gonna go ahead and add in some more garlic right here. Now I added two cloves right here and probably about a clove and a half earlier. But the recipe calls for, I think, two cloves. So that's all you have to do. But if you like garlic like we do, feel free to add some more. And now I'm gonna go in with some paprika. You're gonna want about a teaspoon of that. I'm gonna add in half a teaspoon at a time, kind of stir it good. And we'll come in and add the second half. A good switch up for this is if you really like a good smoked flavor, go ahead and use a smoked paprika on this. I personally do not like smoked flavors that much, um, but I have made it with a smoked paprika by accident and the kids absolutely loved it. They like the smoked flavor and everything. So that is something else that you can kind of add to it and kind of mix the flavors up a little bit. Now we're going to go in and we're going to add the meat that we had cooked earlier. Go ahead and add that in. And then we're just going to get this good and combined as well. And dinner is served. This is just such an easy meal that we love to go back to time and time again. And so I wanted to share it with you. If you feel like this, not enough food, some things that we have served it with in the past, again, rice, I think I mentioned that earlier. We've done corn on the cob with it. Um, we will sometimes make rolls or bread, cornbread with it. Just anything that you like that you think would go good with cabbage and kielbasa. The ideas, of course, are endless. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna go enjoy me some dinner right now and I hope you all have a great day and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye guys.